Hello and welcome to BharatSakti.in. I am Brigadier Chatterjee. We are going to be talking about artificial intelligence and its application in the armed forces. To tell you a little more, uh, firstly about the series, this is a new series that we are starting on technology. We will be dealing with such things like artificial intelligence, we will be dealing with big data, we will be dealing with internet of things, we will deal with a whole lot of subjects on this particular show. If you realize that I am in fact uh, quoting a very cliched statement that technology has invaded the battlefield in a big way. And there's a requirement for all of us to understand the application of the technology. Some of it is dual use, some of it is purely for military purposes, so that we can keep pace with our adversaries. To take us through the artificial intelligence aspect of it, I have with me Lieutenant General Kapoor. Welcome, General Kapoor. Welcome to the show. Good morning to you, uh, Brigadier Chatterjee. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you. Uh, right, General Kapoor, uh, well, you possibly heard the little bit of introduction that I have already given to the subject. Uh, if we, we take off from here, let's start with, you know, AI, the basics, to put every one of our viewers on the, onto the same page. And uh, could you give us some important facts that we must know about artificial intelligence before we think of its employment in the armed forces? Uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, actually, when we look at artificial intelligence, it's made of two very clear words, artificial and intelligence. Intelligence has always come very natural to the human being through the progression of growth. And we talk of uh, intelligence quotients. We talk of emotional intelligence quotients and we talk of spiritual intelligence quotients. But when we look at artificial intelligence, this is the next, if I may say, innovation in technology, which started way back in 50s, where the intention is to simulate human intelligence uh, and processes by using computers. And today it is even machines so that we are able to create expert systems to natural language processing, get into speech recognition, image processing, machine vision and the likes. So really speaking, today when we look at artificial intelligence, it's actually the major enabler. And I dare say that in times to come, if not already so, use of AI will no longer be a choice, it will be a compulsion. Now let me take this a little further uh, because this term AI is sometimes used even for other things which I would like to clarify. Now let me take an example from the defense services. When a gun fires at the target, now they say, oh, we want to bring AI into it. No, sir. A firing of a gun to a target is a simple parabola, a mathematical model, and therefore what we actually use is called business intelligence. Now, if you were to integrate this gun, say with a radar, and now you want to take on a target and say, let me bring in a little more complexity, and if it's a moving target, say an aircraft, now what happens is the radar gives you the present position of the target. But the gun has to always point at the future position of the target, taking the time of flight into account. And therefore, this is called augmented intelligence. So what we are doing is we are augmenting the BI through mathematical models and algorithms to create augmented intelligence. And if we were to move a step ahead and said, OK, now I want to do IFF. And if it is a SAM, I will do a IFF, identify friend and foe, and hit or track only those who are foes. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding some terminal guidance into it and a decision-making loop where autonomously the missile has to take a decision whether to hit and what to hit. Similarly, on a terrestrial terrain, uh, we have been hearing about TERCOM. If it has to engage a target on ground, 
and it has to take that autonomous decision this is where artificial intelligence comes because the machine now has to take a decision based on image interpretations and home on to the target and do the task given to it so the decision making has gone into a autonomous loop so so in an overall analysis therefore we have business intelligence which is largely the norm of automation we have augmented intelligence which is by virtue of algorithms and we have artificial intelligence where actually we are trying to replace a human being into a autonomous system giving it the means to take a decision and and that is the spectrum we are looking at when we look at ai and therefore i say in the future will ai replace a human being yes sir it will it will in most applications you're putting my job at stake here in general i i hope i don't lose it anyway if it's got to be faced it's got to be faced but tell us now now that i'm more particular about my job what's the application in business organizations and more so what is the application in defense really as far as artificial intelligence is concerned right now uh, before that i'd like to just uh, highlight that the new technology world order if i may say is defined by four d's data digitization digitalization and disruption while data digitization and digitalization have resulted in a huge digital transformation it is the data which is being touted as the new oil and technology in general and ai in particular is the oil refinery which can actually take a lot of data now since ai started in 1956 perhaps the data nor the compute was available to give it the kind of trajectory it has got today and therefore today we need, we have a lot of data and as a human mind there's a limitation to the amount of data you can absorb and process whereas when it comes to artificial intelligence the whole brain has been mimicked through algorithms which is called the neural network and this neural network actually helps you crunch a huge amount of data to just give you an example uh, in 2022 the amount of data crunching is close to 100 zettabytes and when we say 100 zettabytes it is a data which would come into 1024 dvds of 1 terabyte each so that is the kind of data that we have got and more often than not most of the applications use a lot of data now the data can either be structured data which is text which is in terms of something that is a tangible or unstructured data which is speech like you and me are speaking it can be videos uh, like we've got these video cameras which are put in the streets they pull out a lot of data and today therefore the whole thing is driven by data now if that be the reality of the show today in the cv street the business models have been evolved around artificial intelligence when we look at facebook google amazon the fang if i may say and today we also have open ai who have come up with a chat gpt which is the latest evolution if i may say in artificial intelligence where they are looking at a reinforcement learning technique just like you and me learn and something good that is done is patted and something bad that is done is admonished that kind of ai is coming into the being so with the result today in this when we look at the society ban large the society is pulverized with artificial intelligence you and me have a credit profile without knowing based on our common information that may be available in the social media and some of these credit cards that we use some of the buying that we do some of the social media interactions that we do based on that a credit scoring has been generated for us and each one of us is quantified in terms of our if i may say uh, credit rating similarly in the uh, industry today if you were to just type in that you are going to visit le the amount of data you will get on high altitude uh, 
hardware that you can carry, your clothing, uh, some hotels there, some air tickets which are available, some uh, other uh, means that you can do for a good holiday, some adventure activities. It will all happen automatically to you. So really speaking, it is the artificial intelligence engines that actually are trying to see your present state and predict a future behavior. And therefore, today they say that from human processing, we are actually advancing to, a hu sorry, from human intelligence, we are advancing to a human behavior. So it is becoming more of a behavioral science. Now that said, today we have got in the CV street, FinTech, we've got HR, uh, I mean, all selections today, all eliminations happen through a chat bot, happen through artificial intelligence. The complete, complete business models are being generated using a lot of data from artificial intelligence. All the competition that companies are into is being managed through artificial intelligence. The next disruption or the next business plan is all being crunched through artificial intelligence softwares to actually create the next euphoria. So, so really speaking, that is the landscape of artificial intelligence where the complete society and all sectors of society, all sectors of business models, all sectors of life actually are getting enabled by artificial intelligence. And that's why I made the statement that the, today it is more of a compulsion than a choice. Very soon it's going to be perform or perish. Uh, thank you, General. I think uh, you've given us an idea about the huge scope of, or rather the huge influence of artificial intelligence and how it's going to be increasing as I see day by day, like our credit rating you talked about. Uh, well, let's go a little more specific now and let's, let's uh, go around, go about the sector, the defense sector. Which are the priority areas and how do you see artificial intelligence coming into them? Brilliant. Now, when we look at the defense sector, actually, we are no different and we also have a lot of data. There is a lot of decision making that happens. There are a lot of routine tasks and there's a lot of predictive analytics and patterns that can be generated. Now, let me start with the example and then maybe I'll dwell further. Now, before the Kargil conflict, when we went through the interports as a fallout of Kargil conflict during the debriefs, what was seen was that a lot of procurement was happening in Pakistan, which went unnoticed, perhaps because uh, we did not have that kind of a data capture or more importantly, we had the data capture, but we didn't have the data analytics that could be done. Similarly, when we had the Eastern Ladakh incident happening, somebody tweeted and somebody came into social media to say, I've never seen so many tanks go in front of my house or go through the town. Now, innocuous input like this, actually, if it is picked up and okay. collated through an artificial intelligence engine, it will actually give you a blow by blow by putting all this together to tell you the shape of things to come. This information came from somebody, uh, transmission in Pakistan, some uh, perhaps talk on the mobile or something like that. Exactly. So, so even no, uh, when you see the procurements uh, in Pakistan, they, they bought, bought some high altitude uh, uh, ECC. Okay. They bought yeah. some, there were a lot of procurements. There were a lot of dumping happening in a particular area. Now, all these inputs were coming. There were some inputs from IB. There were some inputs from other int agencies. There were our own human agencies. There were signals. There were so many things. Now, today, to a human mind, all this information becomes mind-boggling. But exactly. if you add an AI engine, uh, and that engine will ingest all these inputs and then give you an output after processing to tell you, this is what the array looks like today. And these are the departures from the previous. So, so what is the change analysis? What are the new trends? So based on the new trends, actually, the staff could make some very intelligent decisions and maybe come up with a fresh int collection plan to and actually keep ingesting a lot of int collection to come up with actionable outputs. So really speaking, when we look at defense, what we actually need 
is AI platforms. And let me uh, explain this platform for a moment. When we say AI platform, it is actually a large number of algorithms which are there. It's like a a la carte menu. And the AI will decide which menu is the best for you for your breakfast, which is good for lunch, which is good for your tea time, and which is good for dinner. So this platform then can ingest text. It can ingest videos. It can ingest, uh, you can ingest speech, audio, and any structured or unstructured input that you get, you just put into it. And since it is based on a GIS platform, it will create for you a, a common operating picture, a inter, in picture, and it will show you trends, it will show you patterns based on all the data that is ingested. That means if you were to take even SIGINT, COMMENT, uh, HUMINT, RPAs, INT, so all these INTs which are coming from different sources, all this is ingested and on a GIS it will give you as to what is the situation brewing in which location. So it will give you better situational awareness, it will give you better trend analysis and that too in real time. To give you an example, uh, 8 by 8 satellite imagery, if you were to look at military objects of interest, as a human being, a human team which works may take anything from one day to five to six days depending on the number of possible targets. If it were be, to be put through an artificial intelligence module, it can be done in less than 15 minutes. And more importantly, it will give you the truth value in a bracket that this information, I think I'm 90% sure, this information I'm 60% sure. So it will give you the truth value which with which you can describe whether you'd like to believe in this information or you'd like to do a relook based on the kind of inputs you're getting. So, so on the int front, there's a huge, huge baggage. And in peacetime, actually, it's a very big baggage because it helps you uh, with the kind of inputs that you get from so many sources. It helps you create an actionable int plan. And imagine, uh, and I can just want you to imagine, today, I mean, when we were children, and the sheer market news would come in the newspaper. So you were 24 hours uh, into, so every update was, for you was 24 hours. Today, when you sit in front of the TV, every moment the ticker gives you what is the latest state of every share. I mean, in every sequence of the ticker, the changes are perceptible to you. Imagine now, uh, as a int officer, in any headquarters, if you had this kind of input coming to you in real time, various sources collated, analyzed, giving you just the right inputs that you need to plan whatever operations or whatever actions you'd like to take or get a very clear picture in real time, how much value add you get out of this AI platform. Thank you, General. I think that was a wonderful explanation. I do gather from what you say that especially for intelligence gathering and intelligence analysis part of it, AI is a huge big help to intelligence people. Uh, right. I think we'll call it off over here. This is actually the part one of our discussion on artificial intelligence. Part two we will have on a, in a couple of days' time. Thank you, General. Thank you for sparing your time. Uh, okay, Brigadier Chatterjee. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, this is an area uh, where a lot needs to be done, a lot has been done, a lot is being thought of, and I think this little interaction has been very timely. It has given me a lot of time to think and articulate some thoughts, and a lot more when we meet again during the next session. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you, and thank you, viewers. Thank you for joining us. We've had a very detailed talk on certain aspects of AI, but however, that's not complete, and we'll get into a part two of this discussion shortly. Thank you. Do go to our social media pages, like us, communicate with us on subjects that you want to, uh, us to take up. Thank you.